Welcome to the Amphenol Broadband Product Installation Training presented by Extreme Broadband on local and remote powering of the DL Data Plus amplifiers. In this video, we'll explain what is local and remote powering. We'll identify powering components, explain how to configure local and remote powering, and understand the importance of using the power inserter when remote powering. First, we'll look at what is local powering. Local powering is the ability to power the amplifier from any electrical outlet location. Local powering normally uses an electrical outlet that's close to the amplifier location. And local powering uses a dedicated coaxial cable just for DC. The DL Data Plus amplifier has a dedicated local power port. A dedicated coaxial cable is installed between the AC-DC power pack and the amplifier's local power port. Plug the power pack into the AC outlet and DC flows to the amplifier. The power pack and amplifier each have a green LED indicating that DC is present. With local powering, the amplifier can be powered from any convenient electrical outlet location in the home. This could be by any existing unused coaxial cable outlet location, or a new cable could be run to the desired location. The maximum length of the coaxial cable between the amplifier and outlet is 150 feet. Next we'll look at what is remote powering. Remote powering is the ability to power the amplifier from any location where there's a cable and electrical outlet close together. Remote powering allows DC to travel on the same coaxial cable that carries RF, thus eliminating the need to run a dedicated power cable such as with local powering. Let's take a look at what components are needed for remote powering. First we'll look at the power pack and power inserter. The power pack converts AC to DC. On the power pack, there's a mounting hole at the top that is used to secure the power pack to the AC outlet with a screw. This will prevent anyone from accidentally unplugging the power pack, which will result in the loss of power to the amplifier. The power pack comes with a loss of service tag installed. This is a warning that if the unit is unplugged, the cable service will be lost. There's a green LED, which is a visible indicator that the power pack is working and has DC voltage. The power inserter combines DC from the power pack with the RF on the drop, which enables DC to flow to the amplifier. The AC-DC power pack and power inserter are a team and work together. The power inserter has three ports. One port is labeled to power supply. This port is connected to the power pack and only passes DC. The port labeled to amplifier DC slash RF is connected to the cable going to the amplifier and passes both DC and RF. The port labeled to TV slash modem RF output is connected to the end consumer device such as a set top box or modem and only passes RF. The path between port 2 power supply and the 2 amplifier DC slash RF port only passes DC. This path has high isolation and will block all other frequencies. The path between 2 amplifier DC slash RF and 2 TV slash modem RF output port will only pass RF and will not allow DC to pass through. This port is bidirectional to RF and has very low insertion loss to RF and loses less than 1 dB. Next we'll look at why use a power inserter. Due to the power inserter's high isolation to all frequencies between the two power supply port and the two amplifier DC RF port, any electromagnetic interference or radio interference that may be picked up by the power supply will be blocked. 
The power insert is designed to block this interference and only pass DC through. So the EMI or RFI will not be allowed to flow to the amplifier where it may cause interference to services on the other RF ports or travel through to the input port and up the drop and cause interference in the HFC network. In this example, we're showing the power pack connected directly to the RF output number one powering port. The interference that could penetrate the power pack travels through the cable directly to the output number one port. The interference will pass through the RF number one port to the other RF ports where it can interfere with the services on the other outlets in the home, and also to the input port where it can travel up to drop into the HFC network. With the power inserter installed, it'll block any interference coming from the power pack. This also applies to powering through the VOIP and modem port. So always use a power inserter when remote powering. Here we're showing the local powering option where the power pack is connected directly to the local power port. The interference that could penetrate the power pack travels through the cable directly to the local power port. The interference is blocked by the local power port and will not cause any interference problems to the other ports. The DL Data Plus amplifiers have two options for remote powering. The first is through the RF output number one port, and the second is through the VIP slash modem port. These ports are also used for RF and pass both RF and DC. These ports are identified with a label indicating remote power. Let's look at how remote powering works. Remote powering is the ability to power the amplifier from any location where there's a cable and electrical outlet close together. Typically, this could be any location where cable outlets are located as the end consumer device needs power to work. The maximum length of the coaxial cable is 150 feet, but probably will be less due to the attenuation of the cable to RF. Let's look at how to configure remote powering from one of the outlets. In this example, we'll remote power from the bedroom number two outlet location. First, we'll go to the amplifier location on the side of the house and configure the amplifier. Since this is feeding a video service in bedroom number two, we'll use the remote power port located at RF output number one. If we were remote powering from an EMTA or modem location, the passive VOIP port would be used. This is the second remote powering option. The rest of the powering process is the same for both ports. Since the local power port doesn't carry RF, there's no need to terminate this port. Included with the amplifier are two service loss tags. These tags are a warning that if the cable carrying DC is disconnected, the cable service will be lost. Wrap one of the service loss tags around the cable carrying DC power connect the rest of the cables, and mount the Data Plus amplifier into the enclosure. Let's now configure the outlet location in bedroom number two. Connect the power inserters to power supply port to the power pack. Connect the cable going from the wall plate to the power inserters to amplifier DC slash RF port. Connect the cable going to the customer premise equipment to the power inserters to TV slash modem RF output port. Install the other service loss tag onto the cable close to the connector connected to the power inserters to amplifier RF slash DC port. Next plug the power pack into the AC outlet. Screw the power pack to the AC outlet using a screw through the mounting hole at the top of the power pack. DC now flows to the amplifier. At the amplifier before DC arrives, 
Signal already flows from the passive data port as it's before the amplifier stage. Once DC arrives at the amplifier, the amplifier is now activated and RF flows to all the outlets. The remote powering configuration is now complete. Let's look at the flexibility to power from any location with remote powering. To power from the bedroom number one location, configure the power pack and power inserter the same as we did in our example. Or at the family room location, configure the power pack and power inserter the same as we did before. At the EMTA slash modem location, the configuration would be the same. At the amplifier, use the VOIP modem port. Let's review what we learned in this training on remote powering of the DL Data Plus amplifiers. We explained what is local remote powering, identified the powering components, demonstrated how to configure local remote powering, and explained the importance of using the power inserter when remote powering. Thank you for viewing this product installation training on local remote powering of the DL Data Plus amplifiers. For additional training topics, see our website at www.amphenolbroadband.com.